thank you for joining me this wonderful Sunday morning, Coffee with the Bishop. Today is Father's Day, and I'm a father. I have four sons and a daughter, precious children that love God and serve God. What a blessing they are. What a blessing to be a father and uh, have some children that really do love and serve God. I, I want to talk to you today, not about Father's Day, <clears throat> but I want to talk to you about something that really is important to me, and that is your relationship with God. Having not just knowing God, but having an intimate relationship with God. And the title of my word today is, How Well Do You Know Jesus? How well do you really know the Lord? You know, as we get older in life, <clears throat> There is one thing that we gain. We gain knowledge. Sometimes we gain knowledge through education. Sometimes through maybe reading. Sometimes through watching others we gain knowledge. And, of course, there's the old school of hard knocks. Yes, we do learn through our mistakes. Or at least we hope that you learn through your mistake. You know, there's an insurance commercial com that comes on television and the commentator in that commercial, he makes this statement. He says, I know a lot because I've seen a lot. And that's the way knowledge is sometimes. We see things and we learn from that, either our experiences or other people's experiences. But there's a different kind of knowledge I want to talk to you about today, a, a knowledge that goes beyond just head knowledge. And that's knowing people knowing people you ever been in a crowd or maybe a restaurant or something and you see a face over across the room and I, I i do this all the time and i'll turn to brenda my wife and i'll say hey i think i know that person and by knowing i mean that they have been an acquaintance and possibly i recognize their face and of course knowing my bad fault i've surely forgotten their name because the hardest thing in the world for me is to remember names and so, but that happens. You, the memory says, I, I know who that person is. But there's even something more to knowing than just recognition. A whole lot more than just recognizing someone. Have you ever thought that you really, really knew someone? Man, I know them. I know they're just this and they're this. And I know that person. And then some event happen or some circumstance take place, some incident perhaps happen, and makes you know that you didn't really know that person. Perhaps you knew, perhaps you knew uh, who they were. Maybe you knew about them, where they worked. Maybe they were your friend. But you really didn't know the person behind the mask or the face that was there. So that's my question today. How well do you really know Jesus, know the Lord our Savior? Know him through his representation as the Father, his representation as the, the Son, his representation as the Holy Spirit. It's only one Spirit, and that's the Spirit of God. That Spirit was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world to himself. So with all that said, how do we really know Jesus? How do we really know him? Do we know him just by what the Bible says? Do we know what the preacher is standing? I and mean, we hear all these wonderful sermons describing him and, 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 and giving indication of who God is and in, in, in his personalities and, and how, how he affects mankind and how the Holy Spirit is. And do we really know God? We think we do. We think we do. But is it just what we've learned from others? Or do we have a personal, intimate relationship with him? You know, <clears throat> I remember when I first heard the acronym BFF. And I turned and I said, what in the world does BFF mean? And they finally said, well, that means that your best friend forever. And I think I saw it somewhere out there on Facebook or some message somebody had texted me and said, he's my BFF, my best friend forever. And you know, that really got me to thinking. And, and I, I just thought, BFF, do I have 
any BFFs, and I thought about a couple of ministers that are my very, very close, dear friends, and I thought, you know, they're, they're my BFFs. They'll always be my friend, and I really do know them. I have one particular pastor I've traveled the world with. I mean, we have gone around this globe preaching in other countries, and, and uh, he's interpreted for me in Spanish-speaking co countries. And just a great, I mean, one of the finest friends. And I know him. I know his integrity. I know his person. I know him in the still small moments of the jungles of Africa. I've known him in the hot, hot desert places of Mexico and Central America and tropical times. And I've known him in those instances with a sweat running all over us and we're hungry and we're <laughs> still got miles to go before we sleep. And I know him. And do I know Christ as well as I know him? I have to. I have to know God is my BFF. I have to know what makes him happy and what makes him sad, what, what his desires and his likes and his wants. I know that with my very best friend, but do I know that with him? I know that with my wife. I know what kind of food she likes, and I know what what triggers her and doesn't trigger her and what makes her happy and what makes her a little upset with me. I know all those things. But do I know Jesus that way? My BFF. You see, your BFF, you have to know everything about each other. The likes, dislikes, the wants, the desires. And what pleases them. <clears throat> Let's look at John chapter 13, the interesting scripture there, verse 23, John 13 and 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Now this is John. That was John. He had his head right here on the chest of God himself. He was God manifested revealed in the flesh for in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily it was God himself in a fleshly capsule if you want to put it walking among mankind and John wanted to hear the heartbeat of God and he put that he was so close to God and you read <clears throat> down through all of his books, through 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, through the book of Revelation, through the gospel of St. John. You read through all that verse. And in those verses, John is referred to as John the Beloved. The Beloved Disciple is who he is. Amen. And so we go through those readings. And, and it was John who was at the very feet of Calvary with the mother of Jesus, with Mary. It was John who Jesus said, Behold thy mother. He had other brothers. James was his brother. He could have said, James, this is your mother. No, it was John who he said, Behold thy mother. You take care of my mama, is what he was saying. And because of that, John had that relationship with God. Enough that he entrusted his mother's welfare unto him. Could that be the relationship that we have with God? Let's read a, <clears throat> read a little further some of John's writings. 1 John 5 and 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him. I want you to catch that phrase, that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even the Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. Even the Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. He is declaring because of his relationship, he understood that Jesus was the eternal God encapsulated in a fleshly body. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He caught that. He knew that. And he said, if we know him, whew, that is true. We know him that is true. I studied that. The Greek word there for know, to know, is, is uh, ginsoka, ginsoko, ginsoko, to know, 
Gen Soko. It's the same word that is used to describe the sexual relationship between a husband and a wife. Now, the Bible said, and he went in and knew her. Well, we understand what that means. They consummated the marriage by having a sexual relationship. And that's ginsoko, the same word that's talking about that we know God. We have a spiritual relationship that echoes the relationship between a husband and wife when they become literally one flesh, is what the Bible said. And so, spiritually, when we built that relationship where he is in us and we are in him, we become as one flesh with God. Jesus Christ, the one true God. The one true God. This is what Jesus was talking about when he was praying in John chapter 17, when he was praying over his disciples there, as he was commissioning them, is what he was doing. And John, the 17th chapter of John talks about how he called them together and he started this prayer over him. And here's what he said in verse 22. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. Boy, this is powerful. Listen to this. The glory that he has given me. In other words, what I have in me from the Father, which was the Holy Spirit of God himself, dwelt in him. The Spirit of the Father dwelt in Christ. The Holy Spirit of the Father dwelt in Jesus Christ. And he said, that that thou givest me, the glory that you've given me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Even as the Father coincided and combined with Jesus Christ and become one flesh and one spirit, so we become one flesh and one spirit. In the exact example, verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that perfection may come in us as the Holy Spirit comes in us and purifies us. His redemption. Amen. His deliverance, His power, His authority, everything that He is, we can become as one in Christ through that relationship. And that the world may know that Thou hast sent me and love me as Thou and, and love them as You have loved me. So when we were filled with His Holy Spirit, we receive His righteousness and His godliness. When that happens, it's so that the world can know that as Christ was, so we are children of the Almighty God. Children of the Almighty God. That we might be one with Him. As a husband and wife become one flesh. It is the desire of Jesus to become one with you in the Spirit. That's right. He wants to become one with you in the Spirit, just as he was one with the Father, that we can co-mingle, as it were, and become one through his Spirit. Let's read John 14 and 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Oh, Wait a minute, isn't that what it said over there, that he was the true one God? So even the spirit of that truth that he was talking about previously, now we know that that one true God the, is the Holy Spirit. So we're going to receive the true God in us, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. There's that word. You have an intimate relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now remember, this was before the day of Pentecost. 
This is before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's why he had to go away. He had to go to, away to release the entire Spirit of God that was in him, for in him dwelt all the Spirit of God. So he had to release that Spirit of God so that it could diverse itself like tongues of fire, wasn't, t wasn't fire, but like tongues of fire, on all those in the upper room and all those that believe and all those there. So it released that on them. Amen. Hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because neither, but we know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He's not talking about his second coming. Jesus is not discussing his coming back to the earth to redeem us and, and take us to glory for them. He said, I will come to you. He's talking about from the spiritual nature as he came, as he came and sat down in heaven right next to the throne of God. Amen. As he sat down in heaven, praise God, so that the, he in his Holy Spirit could come and fill us. So what is it when we receive the Holy Spirit? We got a little Jesus in us. Come on, amen. We got a little of Jesus in us. That's what it is. And we, be, we truly become Christ-like. The more we become more like Jesus, the more we become as he is through the Holy Spirit, the more we put him on, the more that we allow him to fill us, the more of his image, like he was the express image of God, we become the image of Christ in the world today. His wants, his desires, his loves, his dislikes, his other attributes, we take on those. We love like Christ loved. We care like Christ cared. We hurt like he hurt when we see things that are wrong. All of his attributes we take on. We truly become Christ-like. Wait a minute. Isn't that what the word Christian means, Christ-like? Yes, it does. We become Christ-like. Philippians 3 and 10 says this, That I might know him. There's that word again. No, that means intimate. That I might have an intimate relationship with him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Being made uh, acceptable unto his death. Conform to that place that we're willing to give our lives. That's why I said that we need to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him which is but our reasonable Service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewings of your mind. There's an old song, <clears throat> and uh, it's not a it's not a Christian song, but the words of it could well be used to be a Christian song, and it says, "To know, know, know Him, is to love, love, love Him, and I do, and I do." And I do. Do you really know him today? Well, this week on Daily Manna, I want you to follow closely. Every day I'm going to be expounding upon this message. I'm going to teach you the ways that you be can become or have or gain an intimate relationship with God. Stay tuned. Go to da Daily Manna, 7 o'clock. You can see it anytime. And if you haven't downloaded our app, Download our app and put it on your phone. That's the easiest way to watch. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the, pot, for, for, the, for the privilege of teaching this message today. For all of my viewers, I pray a special anointing on them that they might learn to draw closer to you and build that intimate relationship that you desire for them to have. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Remember, with Jesus, all things are possible.